Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Movie, your show that's normally in a car, but is now in a closet, because that's where I can find a record. Um, continuing on with our Demons Saga, I can go ahead and tell you, I, I'm, I'm a, I have a loss for words here on this one. Um... So, when I looked at the list originally, you know, we've gone through the first five, if you want to call it the first five. We've done, you know, Demons, Demons 2, and then you had the three different movies that were Demons 3, and, you know, then we had Demons 4, Demons 5, and this one, which is called The Black Cat, that's right, the Edgar Allan Poe story, uh, is considered, or it's also called De Profundis, uh, is labeled as <laughs> Demon 6 De Profundis. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start with this one, man. This one should be on the Bat Crap Crazy Week. I, I, I just, I had to literally stop halfway through this one and call my good buddy Richard Glenn Schmidt and say, how do how did I not know about this movie? So here's my here's my problem. When I originally saw the list and I saw the black cat was on there, I thought the artwork looked a little familiar, and I thought, okay, that's a Fulci movie, right? That's the Fulci version of Black Cat. It came out around 1980 or so. No, I'm completely wrong. It's 1989, and it's made by the one and only Luigi Cosi. That's right, the guy that brought us. Contamination. And you can tell it in this movie. Here's the thing about Luigi Cosi. His movies, they're, they're not bad enough to be bad movies. They're not really good enough to be good movies. They just kind of hover <laughs> on that line, which makes them unique. But uh, I, I could not believe... When this movie started, I had never heard of this movie. Or I just took it for granted that they were the same thing, right? Because once you hear the word black cat, and that's the other problem is Argento at this point was busy working with Romero, George Romero, making Two Evil Eyes. And he was making his own version of the black cat. So it just seemed like that name was getting thrown around a lot. And I guess I just somehow missed this one altogether. Is this movie anything about demons? Absolutely not. Is it anything to do with the black cat? Absolutely not. What it is, is an unofficial uh, sequel, or the last part of the witch trilogy. So when, <laughs> here's here's the crazy thing, right? When I say witch trilogy, of the uh, Argento uh, mother trilogy, right? So we're talking about Suspiria, Inferno, and then there was never the third movie, right? Well, this is an unofficial third movie that actually the uh, actually Daria Nicolodi helped put together, maybe even wrote this thing, right? It was kind of her idea. I think it got changed as it went along. But trying to make the the final story, which Argento eventually came around to and made Mother of Tears. And I'm going to be honest with you, I like this one better as a as a original, you know, finishing the trilogy, than Mother of Tears. I really, I, I need to revisit that one. I just remember not being really impressed. But this one, yeah, it, it's it's obviously somebody trying to be Argento, which, again, Luigi Cosi, huge Argento fan, right? Everybody is, if, if you came from this time frame. He was the the, the gold standard, right? So yeah, I mean, I think Luigi even owns what is the the the, the uh, Profondo Rosso shop, right? That's uh, got all the collection stuff from Argento. He runs the dang thing, right? That's how much of an Argento fan he is. Um, 
let's let's talk about this one a little bit, um, if we can. Because like I said, it, it really belongs in the bat crap crazy week. I, I was not prepared for this movie whatsoever. And um, 1989 drama fantasy. Doesn't even say the word horror in it. It says drama fantasy. Because there is a lot of you know people sitting at tables and talking a lot. I'll give you that, right? Uh, let's let's read our synopsis, which there's no way there's going to be a synopsis that explains this movie. There's just there can't be. Uh, it says strange things happen when a wife of a horror director takes the lead in his movie. Really? <laughs> wow. That's our synopsis. There's got to be a better one than that. Let's let's look at another one. Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's a lot of reviews out here of what people think about it, and I'm not going to say the words they're saying. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I guess in a nutshell, that's kind of it. Even though in the synopsis they've kind of got the the who is the wife wrong, so. How can you trust this movie or trust this uh, synopsis, right? It, they gave it a 4 out of 8, I mean a 4.8 out of 10 on IMDb, which, okay, uh, that's doable, I guess. Let's look at this cast real quick. Um, we do have Carolyn Monroe in this, right? From Star Crash, right? Again, Kazi. Uh, I forget to mention, you know, Kazi did did give us the great Star Crash, which I need to do on this show. Um, we've got some regulars from a lot of, uh, again, from the, the B-movie Italian world. Uh, Urbano Barberini is in this. Bob, 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 Barberini. Uh, from the first Demons movie, right? One of the GQ guys. Uh, he's the the director in this movie. He's not the director of the movie. He's the director in this movie. He's putting together a movie called The Black Cat. Why? Don't know. I mean, that's pretty much the answer for everything in this one. Uh, so he's also known for the, what were they, the the gore movies? Or, or were they your? No, it was the, it was the gore. Remember gore? G-O-R, right? And then the outlaw of gore, right? <laughs> Those movies. He was also an opera. I forgot about that. Uh, Argento's opera, which also needs to be talked about on this show. Um, that's all your mm, people really worth talking about. We do have uh, Mikel Suave show up in this too. And he's also... I think he's the director... I'm getting confused now. Maybe uh, maybe Mark, which is the Urbano Barberini character, maybe he's not a director? I think he is, though. But Mikhail Sove is, I guess, the director of photography. I don't know. He's he's on the set, and he's, you know, yelling out the, the demands, right? So we do get Mikhail Sove in there. So there you go. That's always a plus. Uh, what a strange movie, folks. I'm trying to find a way to even start talking about it. They're making a movie. Uh, there's, you know, this people drive up in the street. And you kind of get a a uh, giallo kind of kill at the beginning, but it's all fake because they're making a movie. And one night at dinner, you got Carolyn Monroe and her husband, who's a screenwriter. And uh, the director and his wife are all eating dinner together. And they, they say, hey, we got this new guy that's a financial backer. And he's going to produce our new, a new movie. And it just kind of spirals from there. The The idea for the movie they're wanting to make is about the third mother. And they even have this conversation at the table about, you know, Dario Argento made Suspiria. And then there was Inferno. and then, So it's talking about the three mothers, right? And the one that hasn't been made was about Livana, uh, the mother of tears. Which is the third the third movie? We get a glimpse of her um, in Inferno. She's you know sitting, just sitting pretty, beautiful lady in 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 the in Inferno. But in, in this one, no man, she's all witched out, 
face foot covered with bowls. Uh, you can't even really see your eyes. They're just solid white. Um, and what's happening here is they're trying to decide who's going to play the role. Kelly Monroe wants to play the role. Her character wants to be the star of the new movie, but it's really up to the director, and he wants to cast his wife. Well, his wife starts getting intrigued about playing this myster mysterious character, and she goes downstairs and tries to dress up and try to start looking witchy, I guess. And then all of a sudden, she hears the voice of, of Lavana, and she comes busting out of the, the mirror, which kind of reflects back on Inferno as well, if you know what I'm talking about at the end of that one. I need I haven't done Inferno on this show yet, and I need, I need to do it. Um, but anyway, she comes busting out of the mirror and falls on top of uh, the director's wife and basically starts throwing up green goo in her face, which is pretty nasty, right? So just out of nowhere, that happens. Uh, she goes and tries to tell her husband, and he's like, okay, the mirror is totally fine. There's no sign of anything going on. So you, you kind of got that thing going on through the rest of this movie. Uh, there is a ton of things that happen in this movie that make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Um, there's a lot at the heart of this, though. Uh, again, very you, you can tell they're trying their best to capture the Suspiria Inferno feeling. The only odd thing... And this may be the demons tie into it, but they try to do the music thing like the first demons movie or the second one as well, where they're using like a heavy metal soundtrack, right? Because <laughs> they they use the big song from a band called Bang Tango. Which they really only had kind of one big song. And you get to hear it about, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, twelve times in this movie. There should be a drinking game. Like, every time you hear that song, you, you, you'd be soused by the time this movie's over. Uh, we do get a little snippet of, of some White Lion doing the uh, Golden Earring classic Radar Love. But it's really just the guitar part. You know, that stuff. So you don't hear any real singing on that. But everything, they're trying to relate that back to the soundtrack, right, of, of the original. Uh, Demons. And maybe that's why they consider this to be a, a demons movie. I don't know. I'm just saying. That's what it looks like. Um, there's a lot of twists and turns here. You you get to where you can't tell what's real and what's not. Uh, the refrigerator goes out at the director's house, and his wife comes home one day. She's got a a, a nanny that babysits all the time. She comes home, and there's this dude working on the refrigerator. And she has to sign a piece of paper saying, yeah, I agree to pay this, whatever, right? But when she comes back down, there was no dude ever there. Fridge still doesn't work. Uh, there's a little boy that's sitting upstairs with the baby. Says he's a big fan of hers because she's been in some movies and he wanted her autograph. And she thinks it's the nephew of the lady that's, that's uh, supposed to be babysitting, right? So she asked the little boy, hey, where's, what's her name? I can't even think of her name right now. Oh, she's in the next room over there. She goes over there, and she's in here dancing around with her rock, Walkman on, trying out some new clothes. And she stops her, you know, the mom stops her, hey, you know, you okay with just leaving the baby in there with your nephew? She's like, what are you talking about? He's not here. So they go back there, nobody there. So yeah, what's what's happening here? Who really knows? So the whole movie is based on this woman who's supposed to be trying to play this character, Lavana, having these nightmares that are happening because it's almost like a curse. You're not allowed to to portray this character, and she's going to do everything she can to stop that from happening. <laughs> this movie is so bizarre. Um, again, I... I, I it's it's like a bad fever dream when you're watching this, which kind of goes along with the original, you know, uh, mother trilogy. It it, it kind of fits in with that as far as that aspect. Um, the the weirdness of the financial backer, the guy that's in the wheelchair who's just hateful to everybody. Everybody plays a part in this too, even where the the wife 
dresses up as Lavana, and she's standing over the crib with a knife in her hand like she's going to stab the baby because she was visited by a little girl on TV. <laughs> I mean, like, on TV. Like, she's talking to the girl through the TV, kind of poltergeist style. And she, the TV breaks, and this knife falls out, and it's the knife of Lavana's. And she's supposed to go use it, and she's standing over the the baby with the knife, but you think it's Lavana, but it's not. It's this woman dressed up. Her husband comes in, tries to stop her. They get in a big fight. Uh, she stabs him. He takes the knife, stabs her. And guess what? It's all a dream, right? So, I mean, it's constantly just rehashing this stuff. There's one scene where the this woman that's playing the role goes to the financial backer and his house is, I don't know, infested with jellyfish. I, I don't know what's going on here. Lots of red light. It looks like jellyfish is just taking a crap on everything. And uh, she goes in and this guy saying, hey, the only way you're going to stop all this is just to shoot yourself. And some for some reason, she's got a gun. And she decides, you think she's going to shoot herself, but she decides to shoot the dude in a wheelchair. And she shoots him, and he's like, hey, what'd you do that for? So she shoots him again in the head, right? And then the caretaker of this guy, the secretary, comes in. She has to knock her off, too. <laughs> Is it real? Don't know. Don't care. It's just crazy enough to keep you going, right? When this all is said and done, uh, you know, the, the, the screenwriter, he gets knocked off. You, I mean, and then he, he drives the car. I mean, the guy's been left for dead. Apparently, he makes it to his car, drives all the way back to wherever he is. I mean, he went off to be isolated so he can write. Drives all the way back, but instead of going home to Carolyn Monroe where he belongs, he comes crashing through this woman's house. The car is just hanging in the front of the house, crawls out, and, you know, kind of gives her some hints of what's going on. And apparently, Carolyn Monroe and this lady's husband, who's the director, has got a thing going on, right? And you almost think, okay, are they using this to drive this woman insane, using all this stuff about Lavana and none of it's real, but they're kind of, you know, ruining her with all this stuff? It's hard to tell. Uh... And there's really no explanation. All we do know is at the end, she figures out that the little boy and the girl on the TV, possibly, no, no, she's something totally different, which makes no sense. But all these different characters are all Lavana rolled up into one. And come to find out, this, this is where it's almost like the remake of Suspiria, where you're following this girl and... You feel sorry for her, and she's scared to death, but then you find out she's a witch, too? Well, guess what? It's kind of what happens here, too. This woman, apparently, in real life, I guess, is also a witch, so she turns it around on Lavana, I guess, if Lavana's real. Don't really know. Don't know if she was a made-up character just to get to this point, but they have a face-off, so you got this witch that's shooting lasers out of her fingers, to kill this other woman, and she blows up, but then she can reverse time and come back, and I'm telling you, <laughs> it's totally insane, and I love it, <laughs> because it doesn't make a lick of sense. Uh, it's just it's just crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. Uh, I, I don't know what else to tell you. It's not a demons movie. It's not a black cat movie it's it's a third installment of a trilogy that they never wanted <laughs> uh from my understanding dario nicolotti presented the 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 material for for this movie and when it came down to being luigi Cosi directing it she wasn't happy with that choice so i think they took away some of the liberties of what they could use of the material almost like she wanted it to fail there's a lot of stories of uh, Luigi Cagli saying that he showed the movie to Argento and he was very pleased with it. But then you got Ar Argento saying, I've never even seen that movie. So who knows? The story behind this movie is just as crazy as the story that's in the movie. So I I'm just, I'm absolutely floored that I didn't know about this movie. As much as I love Suspiria and Argento and all things Italian horror. 
I guess I just got this confused with the other one because it's called freaking Black Cat. And there's no reason for it to be called Black Cat. Absolutely no reason, period. And, uh, yeah, that that's kind of my take on this one. Should you watch it? Well, if you like Argento, yes. Don't expect Argento. Uh, don't expect the Black Cat. Don't expect Demon Six. Uh, expect a lower-grade pretend Argento student. I hate to knock him that bad. I mean, the dude's made some some legendary bad movies, even though he wasn't trying to make a bad movie. Uh, there's a there's a lot of fun to be had with this movie. It's almost like a a Cronenberg movie that's been put in a blender. I don't know how else to describe it. I really don't. It has totally caught me off guard. And for that, I'm thankful. Because, you know, over time, when you've seen, I don't know, several thousands of movies, it's hard to catch something that makes you go, oh, oh wait, wait, what? What? <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah. Uh, as far as a rating on this one, I'm going to give us a three out of five. Uh, I really want to watch it again and try to make some more sense out of it. But something in my mind just says, you know what, man? Just let it flow. Just let it flow, man, because it's not going to make any sense. So um, if you're a completist, you need to check it out like myself. And we will continue on with the next Demon movies coming up real soon. So till then, folks, uh, let me know if you've seen this one because I, I'm just, uh, again, I'm just floored that I haven't seen it. Uh, folks, till then, we will ch 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 you later. <laughs> Dr. Goofy! Dr. Goofy! Dr. Goofy! Yeah! <laughs>